So I'll give you two scenarios. Um, scenario A on one hand versus scenario B on the other hand. So a doctor asks a question. So doc, tell us what are the causes of microcytic anemia? Then this is student A. Um, um, iron deficiency? Um, mm, sideroblastic anemia? Um, I, I think thalassemias and uh, microcytic anemia. So keep that in mind. That's pretty much student A. Now here comes student B. Doc, tell us about the causes of microcytic anemia. Well, Doc, the causes of microcytic anemia include iron deficiency anemia, thalassemias, sideroblastic anemia, as well as anemia of chronic disease. Now, if you're looking at student A versus student B, they both have said the exact same thing, the exact same information. But what's the difference? Student A has delivered the information much uh, in a very poor way with a lot of interposing in between, a lot of gaps, a lot of doubt. Student B has been much, much confident. And I'm sure if you go to the doctor's office today and, you've, and your doctor wasn't so sure whether they should give you paracetamol or not, even if they give you the paracetamol, most likely you're not gonna take it because you probably don't trust this chap. So again, if you're going for student A, then boy oh boy, that's your baby to nurse. If you're going for student B, then that will definitely make you better in the rotation. So let's just jump right into this episode. Hello and welcome to Hospital Survival Guide. This is season one, episode two. I know you guys really loved episode one where we talked about different things that I wish I knew before the rotation. And here again, we will talk about another episode. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the five things that make you smarter during the rotation. So these things pretty much make you a better doctor. They will pretty much make you a better student. You will get higher marks when you are actually participating in these oral exams. You will do much, much better than your colleagues. So there are five important things. The first thing I've already alluded to it in the, in the segment that I had just before the show started, pretty much organizing your speech. You should have some form of confidence. And here's the rule of thumb. When I was rotating in these departments or when I was undertaking my oral exams, I had this principle. If someone was to ask me a question, before I can blabber my mouth, I need to give myself some time to think about it. What would I do? I would repeat the question in my head. Not to be examined, I would repeat the question in my head very quickly because that would give me a time to understand what the question is all about. Suppose someone asked me, what are the causes of microcytic anemia? I would ask myself, what are the causes of microcytic anemia? I already understand that this person is asking me for the causes of microcytic anemia. Then I would compose my speech and know that, okay, I'm supposed to start off in this manner. And rough thumb, do not, do not list any values. Like there are four causes of microcytic anemia because once you now add a number to that, it puts your brain under stress to remember those four numbers such that now you are more likely to forget the other two causes. So just start by saying the causes of microcytic anemia include iron deficiency, thalassemias, sideroblastic anemia, as well as anemia of chronic disease. So there should be some level of confidence. Why? It's because you're trying to make a doctor. The more confident you are, then the better the principles are going to stick in your head. And of course, do not be overconfident. We get one of those uh, people that are even confident in saying the wrong thing. I'll be like, ah, no, doc, uh, the spleen is the one that is responsible for the control of temperature in the body. And because that they are very, very confident, you even tend to believe them that the spleen is pretty much responsible for controlling temperature in the body because they are, they are overconfident. Do not make those overconfident people in the rotation. Confidence will help you learn new things. At the same time, it can be a barrier towards your progression inside the rotation, towards you getting better marks on your theory exams, as well as you getting better marks on your oral exams, especially the oral exams, because we are now going to be introducing these oral exams back now that the pandemic has rather stabilized a bit in uh, our country so we're pretty much going to be introducing these or exams very soon and or exams are very nerve-wracking very very nerve-wracking you just know that when you're doing an or exam and the, the examiner or when you're even on the words and the examiner asks you doc 
what year are you in and you should know that whatever you're saying is a bunch of i'll let you complete that for yourself so the first and foremost thing is of course confidence organize your speech and you should speak in a confident manner you should speak in a manner that you are a medical student you are going to train to be a doctor of course this leads on to the second thing of mine which is pretty much mind repetitions now mind repetitions help you understand what is going on suppose you're in a tutorial and you keep zoning out or suppose you're listening to a lecture and you keep zoning out this is what you should do to keep your mind active do these mind repetitions if whatever the lecturer says repeated in your mind whatever the lecturer does repeat it in your mind for example if the lecturer says that okay the skin is by far one of the most important dermatological organs and i think it's one of the most important dermatological organs or um, the person says that the functions of the skin include the following things it has a protective function so you could repeat okay so the spleen the skin rather has a protective function in your mind such that in this way when the doctor is giving you tutorials when you are standing in clinic when you are pretty much doing whatever activity that you're doing your mind is active and your mind keeps on working it keeps on understanding the principles and in this way it is actually much much more more easy to follow whatever is happening so have these mind repetitions they do not only just work with uh, the tutorials they work with exam questions and when you are writing exam questions because it's very easy when you're writing a theory paper to simply uh, track off and derail yourself from that so have these mind repetitions of what you're, is being asked of you of, of what is being taught this way you are actually encoding these things in your mind as you learn never let your mind wander in a very very important situation so that's the second thing that i would advise you to do that would actually make your rotation much easier that would actually make you much smarter during the rotation and of course you will be able to follow most of these conversations then of course the third the third thing is i what would i do okay not what would jesus do not what would moses do but what would i do okay what would you do i want you to now it, to be in this habit whenever you are at the hospital every moment that you are with the doctor okay it be it in clinic be it on the wards be it wherever you are ask yourself what would i do how would i approach this before the doctor actually makes a management plan ask yourself in your mind okay i've gotten this patient what would i what would i do if i was in this position if i get a, if you're on call and you're seeing patients with the doctor and you the patient comes in into the room and they give you the presenting complaints ask yourself in your mind what questions would i ask this patient of course they ask they may be sometimes where the doctor actually misses these questions and actually doesn't ask the patient these questions now if they don't ask the patient these questions you can actually pose these questions to the doctor why haven't you asked these questions because we're all human and we tend to forget so do not forget to ask yourself what would I do in every scenario that you undertake? Then, of course, at the end of your day, replay the events in your mind of what happened during the day, what happened uh, during clinic, what happened on cold days, and ask yourself, was that the right thing that the doctor did? Would I have done something different if I was in that case and if I was given uh, that responsibility to become that person's doctor? Would I actually respond in a much different way? Then once you ask yourself these things, then this will now sharpen your mind and it will sharpen how you reason as a doctor. It will sharpen how you reason as a health professional because that's what this channel is all about, transforming you into the biggest and of course the best uh, healthcare uh, professional you can ever be so if again if you haven't yet subscribed to this uh, videos please hit the subscribe button we want to reach 2000 followers before june you are going to make my birthday if we actually reach 2000 subscribers before june my mind is literally going to explode and of course do not forget to hit the bell notification icon to be receiving such notifications of such videos every time i post drop a like and also drop a comment to show some support it really goes a long way and i love the feedback that you guys are giving so getting back to our video remember the third thing always ask yourself what would i do suppose you were in this presentation right now and you were giving this lecture to 
the thousands of subscribers that I have on my channel and you ask yourself, what would I tell people that would make me smarter during the rotation? What would I do? So that's the third thing that you should do, of course, ask yourself, what would I do? And then, of course, the fourth thing is a topic a day. And then this time, I'm not going to repeat myself about a topic a day keeps the sap away. And that's not, that's not what I mean. What do I mean? There are days when you go to the hospital and you actually leave minus you learning anything. There are days you go to the hospital where there's absolutely no, and I mean nothing, zero, not even the doctor asking you a question. There are those days where you go to the hospital. Never, from now on, from today, after you watch this video and you learn from this video, never go to the hospital and leave minus you not having discussed at least one thing. Okay, one topic. It may not necessarily be with the doctors that are there. It would be with your study buddies. It would be with your rotation mate. It would be in a tutorial. Make sure that every day that you are at the hospital and when you leave, you have learned at least one thing. If you're not learning in theory, then you could be pretty much learning in your practical aspect. You have learned at least one skill or you have perfected one skill. So you get to the hospital, whatever time you get to the hospital and you realize that, oh, no one is actually willing to teach us. When you have the free time, before you actually rush a home or if you're waiting for the school bus, you can dis discuss something. In between the time where doctors are discussing their, their own issues, you can use that, utilize that time to now be bouncing off ideas off, your, off of your friend. So in this vein, give each other topics. So form study buddies, form study associations. I'm not saying, you know, meet every single day, go to this person's house every day to meet and finish their food. No, do not do that. If you're doing that, that's really much on you but um anyways form a, a type of association with your friends in your rotation such that when you give each other topics by the end of the week you know that each person has at least done one topic in a day if you are two of you that's even fine because you can alternate today we're both going to study on let's say we are in internal medicine we're both going to study on tb then tomorrow you will present. Suppose my friend is Peter. I'm going to study on TB and then suppose I'm presenting today. I'm going to present about TB the next day. Then the next day you choose another topic. Suppose today we're going to be reading up on respiratory. No, that's too much respiratory. We're going to be reading up on hypertension. We'll both read up on hypertension, but Peter, you're the one who that who, who's going to uh, present the reason why i'm saying that you should both read on the same topic is because most of the times the person who presents in any scenario is the one that is most knowledgeable about that that topic and if you get this person just constantly always just presenting the topic presenting the topic you are not going to be benefiting as much as this other individual that's pretty much going to be presenting this topic so that's why you should be taking turns and you should be reading the same topics because at the end of the day when you finish all the topics because you have a lot of days in the rotation if you're doing this every single day you're learning a topic every single day and if you're rotating for a full number of uh, let's say seven weeks so that's seven multiplied by five days that's about 35 topics that's a lot of topics for you to cover that's almost all the high yield topics in any course that you can actually think about you discussing these things every day before you actually leave and then once you finish with all these topics you can even have these question sessions where you pass through different past papers or you pass through OSCE exams we have all this material and it will be made ready of course at a certain price very very soon we are working hard as a channel to provide you with the best medical education that is out there so remember a topic a day never leave the hospital minus you learning any single thing then the fifth and final thing is of course staying on track what do i mean by staying on track it's very easy to go to the hospital and actually be derailed what do i mean by derailed i would rather you stay stick to your focused schedule learn everything that you have to learn within the eight weeks and then pass the exam rather than keep following people that are going to be derailing you and at the end of the eight weeks you haven't passed through all the topics you failed your exam 
But then people on the wads have been saying that this person is a very good student. We've had such students where they've just been derailed by other people. You'll get there and you'll get topics. Of course, if you have presentation topics, that's an obligation that you have to do. If you have a presentation, you should go the extra mile of you actually preparing for that presentation. So that shouldn't affect your study schedule. But if you have set in stone that today I'm supposed to cover rheumatic heart disease, whether it's snowing, whether it is raining, make sure you cover rheumatic heart disease. Because at the end of the day, I'll ask you this question. Who's going to write the exam? Is it going to be the doctor? No, it's going to be you. Who's going to be failing if you don't stick to the schedule and you don't pass to the other topics? It's you. Who's going to end up repeating the year and having to pay thousands and thousands of quachas, or if you're paying in dollars, thousands and thousands of dollars to actually um, repeat the year? It's you. So at the end of the day, it's your life and your hands and your education that is in your hands. So do not begin to be derailed. If you have a study schedule, stick to that study schedule. If you have been given a topic an extra on that, think of that as extra work for you to push because that topic may actually show up in your exam. So actually do put in that effort to study that extra topic, but also stick to your topic. Stick on track with your timetable and the list of high yield topics that you have. And I am glad to uh, have you having watched the entire video. And if you really did enjoy this video, please hit the like button because we will make more of such content and we will release more of such content where you have a face to face interaction with me. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such videos every time I post. Drop a like, drop a comment, and we shall catch you on season one, episode three. I will release the topics that we'll want to cover and people should actually vote on them on my community tab because it's only the community tab votes that actually count not social media votes but on the community tab so whenever you have a look out for that whenever i advertise that on my socials head there and actually place your vote and then we will actually make the videos because we do listen to the people my name is dr moses kazevu also known as dr mk7 until next time 